Two minutes, 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, ignition. Lift off. We've had successful liftoff of Falcon 9 as it carries SES-12 to geostationary transfer orbit. Eagles We're coming up on max Q here in a pressure. few seconds. Max Q, remember, as we increase our velocity, pressure increases, but then we're going through less dense atmosphere, so pressure decreases. Everything after max Q means the scarce density is decreasing the pressure on the vehicle. So we're going to come up on a few events here in short succession. It's MECO, stage SEP, and then SES-1. MECO is main engine cutoff. That's when all nine engines on first stage stop firing. There follows stage separation, when the two stages gently separate from each other. And then the third event in that succession is SES-1, which is engine. second engine start number one. We'll see those here in a few seconds. And we're coming up on the next major event, which is the deployment of the fairings, those aerodynamic shields surrounding SES-12. FDS is safe. And the fairings have deployed. So to recap all that quickly, we had max Q, max pressure, and then the main engine's cut off, second and then the stage stages separated, normal. and then we had second engine start. Yeah, now this is the first of two planned burns yeah, that the second normal. stage will conduct. Then the fairings deployed thereafter, exposing SES-12 to space. We don't need that extra mass once we're outside of the atmosphere. We no longer need our aerodynamic shield. Now a quick note on the fairings. While we aren't attempting recovery of the fairings today, we have been attempting to recover fairings during our West Coast launches. Now, last launch, we got pretty close with the fairing landing about 50 meters from Mr. Steven, which is our catch boat, and we will continue those recovery attempts until we're successful, but not on today's SES-12 mission. So we're going for a few minutes here. This burn is, again, six minutes long. We've gone through about two minutes of it. So this will continue for another about four minutes, and then we'll reach Seco-1, which is second engine cutoff number one.
And if you're just joining us, we again had a successful liftoff of the Falcon 9. It's carrying the SES-12 payload to geostationary transfer orbits. Second stage has separated and is about halfway through its first of two planned burns. It's currently T plus six minutes. We have about two and a half minutes left in this first of two burns for the second stage until we enter about a 17 minute coast period. So again, the second stage is carrying SES-12 to its geostationary transfer orbit. Two minutes remain in this burn. Stage two trajectory continues to be nominal. Checking in again, we're at T plus seven minutes. Second stage is still burning. This burn is again six minutes in full duration. There are, is about 80 seconds or so remaining in this burn as it glows ember red there. After this burn concludes, this will be Seco 1, second engine cutoff number one. And then second stage will coast with SES 12 for about 17 minutes before it lights again. Stage two terminal guidance. Now we've reached T plus eight minutes, 20 seconds from now, this burn should conclude, marking Seco one, second engine cutoff number one. Stage two FDS has saved. Back off. And then you heard the call out for successful cutoff of the MVAC engine. Welcome back, everybody. We're at T plus 25 minutes just beyond, and we're back live. Uh, the ground track we're passing just over Africa. We're about to relight that engine, and that's going to start SES-2, or second engine start number two. That will happen in about 30 seconds. I remember it's important to distinguish that SES in Falcon terms stands for second engine start, which is to be distinguished from the name of the company that is operating today's satellite, which is SES as well. So we'll relight for second engine start number two here in about 10 seconds, and that burn will not be six minutes, but will be one minute instead. And you've heard good power and good motion. So that signifies a good SES2, a good second engine startup. Again, this lasts for about a minute. 
and this burn will bring the velocity of second stage and the SES-12 from low Earth orbit at around 7.4 kilometers per second to over 9.5 kilometers per second. That is extremely fast. And that is brought to you by 210,000 pounds of thrust that this MVAC-D engine puts out. It also adds a lot of impulse in a very short amount of time. Uh, impulse is the measure of efficiency. It's kind of like the gas mileage for rocket engines. So we're now going to conclude this burn in about 30 seconds or so, and that will be Seco 2, second engine cutoff number two. And then we'll break for a few minutes before we attempt to deploy SES-12. And that clapping that you can hear in the background signifies that we did have successful Seco 2 second engine cutoff. So with that large delta V from that second and final burn, we now wait for a few minutes before we actually attempt to deploy SES-12 into its geostationary transfer orbit. Now, SES-12 is going to ultimately end up in geostationary orbit, but to get it there, second stage is going to put it in what we call geostationary transfer orbit, or GTO. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It's the orbit which transfers the payload to geostationary orbit, or GEO. Now, second stage will deploy SES-12 in an elliptical GTO orbit, and then SES-12 will coast on until it intersects GEO, and then at that point it will use its own onboard thrusters to circularize into its final geostationary orbit. So coming up next, we have these payload adapters which support SES-12 and then springs that are mounted to them, which will enable a gentle push off the deployment of SES-12 coming up in about a minute. And as you hear the callouts on the net and the clapping behind me and the video footage of SES gracefully floating away, that will bring our webcast to a close. To recap, we had a successful liftoff, a successful save separation, and continuation of SES-12 into GTO. Now that brings, again, our webcast to a close, and this is also a ni nice day because it marks the eighth anniversary to the day of the first successful Falcon 9 flight from this same launch pad on June 4th in 2010, so an important legacy day for us. We'd like to thank our customer, SES, for their legacy with our launch platform. We would like to thank the United States Air Force as well as the range for their continued support, and we would like to thank the FAA for their readiness to, to license us, as always. Thanks to the viewer for tuning in again, and if you'd like to visit opportunities we have here, please visit spacex.com slash careers. You can check for updates on the next mission, as well as other updates from us on our social platforms and our website. Thank you again for joining us this night. We'll see you next time.